Hello, darlings. What would you do with 48 hours in Vancouver? I mean, there could be thousands of different outcomes, and our trip is just one of them. We're diving into the food scene. We're talking thick egg toasts, s'mores ice cream bars, Korean royal cuisine, a French corner cafe serving heavenly crispy croissant sandwiches. So many artfully prepared dishes. Let's not forget about Putin. 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 From casual to fancy, ooh, Vancouver has it all. There's also the Van Dusen Botanical Garden, the Thousand Acre Stanley Park, a cafe filled with painted portraits. All right, I gave you plenty of previews of what's to come in this video. Remember to hit that like button to support our channel, and let's get this adventure started. Thanks to Boksu for sponsoring this video. More on these delicious snacks later. If you drive from downtown Seattle to downtown Vancouver, it'll take about 2 hours and 45 minutes. However, it could take significantly longer depending on traffic and how long it takes to get through customs. There are multiple ports of entry between US and Canada. We head to the border crossing station at the Peace Arch Historical State Park. Be sure to check Canada's entry requirements as you plan your visit, because those may change. Eventually, we approach downtown Vancouver. We have priorities, and it's called Putin. Fritz European Fry House, show us what you're about. Topping options include pooled pork and Montreal smoked meat. Vegans can choose soy bacon bits, vegan cheese, and vegan gravy. They sell hot dogs as well. We order takeout and walk two blocks to Emery Barnes Park. First up is the poutine with Montreal-style smoked meat. For those new to poutine, the main ingredients are french fries, cheese curds, and gravy. When it comes to toppings, there are variations. Let's get a little bit of every ingredient. How is it? Mmm! Tasty and salty. The meat is a topping here and there's a lot of fries on the bottom. So if you want to enjoy your meat the longest, take your time on the topping. Work on the fries too. On to the second poutine. This one is topped with pulled pork. <laughs> They're really stuck together. Get some fries as well. <laughs> it looks like strands of hair. Wow. For some reason, the cheese in this one is more uh, loosey-goosey, like more flexible and melty. How does the pulled pork compare to the smoked meat? You like it better than the other one? Mm -hmm. Why? How so? The first one, there's just too much saltiness in there. This one... Mm. Flavor-wise, I prefer the poutine with Montreal-styled smoked meat. The pulled pork though, that one is way softer. Would you say the cheese is squeaky? Very squeaky. Mm. And now, a digestive walk through downtown Vancouver. After a 20-ish minute walk from Emery Barnes Park, we arrive to Bread and Butter Cafe, where we shall get thick toasts. I already studied their menu online in advance, but here's the handwritten excerpt. They also sell coffee and tea. Lululululu. The toasts pass the smell test. Introducing the torched Wagyu egg toast and truffle mushroom egg toast. Both are bookended by slices of brioche. The truffle toast contains scrambled eggs, cheddar, and of course, mushrooms. Truffleish. Super umami. The egg is moist. The bread is pretty fluffy, but then when you squish it and eat it, it flattens out quite easily. All right, let's try the toasted wagyu. Has long slices of scallion and egg at the bottom. I like the other one. Why? It has more flavor. This one has so much scallion. Toast so thick can barely fit the mouth around it. I can barely fit a bite. How many eggs in one sandwich? Yeah, how many eggs is that? It's like quite a bit in there. Maybe three? The egg is so good. 
You still gotta get a piece of that Wagyu. I do love truffle, but I do prefer the toasted Wagyu. More food options as we head back to the car. With only 16 minutes left on the parking meter, we jogged most of the way and rested at stoplights. Made it to the car on time before getting a ticket. Now we head west towards English Bay Beach. Let's chillax at Cafe Portrait. As the name suggests, the cafe is covered in portraits. I'm already in love. Super enjoying the paintings and variety in framing styles. Portraits even on the glass tabletops. Turns out the owner of this cafe, his father painted all these portraits. The interior utilizes reclaimed wood and vintage furniture. Uh, their specialty here is Turkish coffee. It's almost 3 p.m. So if we have coffee right now, we can't sleep tonight. <laughs> but we wanted to experience the space and we wanted to try some of their tea and pastry. And it turns out we got the last pastry. A customer earlier, they bought like 36 of them or something like that. So. <laughs> this one's the raspberry brioche made by the local Buku Bakery. Oh la la! <laughs> Aside from pastries and coffee, they also sell brunch items named after artists, like the Modigliani Benedict, the Kandinsky Omelette, and Monet Plate. A short walk away is Morton Park, where you'll come across 14 jolly sculptures. Their cheerfulness is infectious. <laughs> Their depictions of the artist's own laughter. It's a Tuesday afternoon. The sun is out and so are the humans. We notice a tree on a 19-story apartment tower. The colorful geometric imagery makes this high-rise look friendly. Poppy's Oyster Bar also has a fun color palette. And now we're driving over to Stanley Park. Stanley Park spans a thousand acres and is largely surrounded by water. There are many paths and about 17 miles of forested trails. It's also home to beaches, the Vancouver Aquarium, Beaver Lake, and more. And if your timing is right, you might catch some blooms at the Rose Garden. From the Lost Lagoon, you'll get a view of downtown Vancouver. Quick, 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 quick. I totally underestimated the size of this park. <laughs> I looked big on the map, but being here in person, it definitely is big. You could spend all day here. There are a lot of recommended spots at this park. We wanted to hit them all, but we ran out of time because we have a dinner reservation at 5.30. About a 15 minute drive east, we arrive at the Mackenzie Room. If I'm honest, the area felt a little sketch at the time, so we parked as close as we could. But the food, oh my, turned out to be so good. The interior feels cozy with its wooden elements. Dried floral arrangements sit on a cabinet, next to a collection of pennant flags. Vintage photos are hung here and there. The most painterly wall has been chipping away, exposing the brick underneath. One corner has blue chairs, creating a liveliness. Called Werewolf in Vancouver, this cocktail contains chili, maple, black walnut bitters, and odd society mongrel. This is one of the most complex drinks I've ever had. It's spicy, it's sweet, there's a depth to it. Like, you could have a spicy and sweet conversation as a high schooler, but this is like a spicy and sweet conversation with someone in their 60s, someone with a lot of wisdom. Guests may order individual dishes, as written on the chalkboard. But for duo diners, there's the just for two of us menu. First up is chicken of the sea. Sea urchin is molded into a rectangle and crowned with crushed hazelnut. It's accompanied by squid ink brioche and cubed pears. The bread is so crispy. It's so buttery. Oh, it's delicious even just plain like that. For the next bite, gotta spread on that sea urchin. Cut smooth like slightly melted butter. Mmm, so delicate. I'm not a big fan of uni, but I guess I'm gonna be a big fan of this. <laughs> this next dish is Cukes of Hazard. Must be named after that 80s show, Dukes of Hazard. Lots of sesame seeds sprinkle on there, and ooh, you could smell it. 
It's like a little island with a little forest and you have all this liquid around it. This is a leaf. This is a cucumber leaf. Cucumber. Wow. Whoa, they put it together like a puzzle piece. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. The cucumber and leek are cuddling. It's they a cuddle fest. Loves it. So refreshing. Mm. Sesame oily and spicy. Where's that spicy coming from? There's chili and garlic in it. New plates per dish. Called Prince Charming, this dish features pan seared Arctic char. Underneath is a bed of onion soubis and lemon liaison sauce with root vegetables. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So pumped to try this dish. Love the colors, the shapes, the textures. Each artful plate is like eating an abstract painting. Sour, something sour in here. Wow. Ooh, that sauce is creamy. The onion enhances the sweetness. Crispy. Mm. Each plate is good. Lord. At this point, we're pretty full, but we still have two dishes left. On to the fourth and last entree, collar by your name. It's got pork collar, huckleberry, carrot, and sauce a la royale. The sauce is a little, there's a bitterness. I love it. This meat just falls apart so easily. The white bits are pureed carrot and beet. The sourness, the sweetness, the savory, a little bit of saltiness. It's just, they take turns. Why are the dishes here so consistently really good? How do they do that? We are given fresh individual plates for dessert. Ooh, I adore these floral details. This five meal course comes to an end with Big Baba. It's a small cake soaked in rum syrup and crowned with Chantilly cream. Look at how it jiggles. Just very, so fluffy, so light. I thought it was gonna be very sweet, but there's a bit of a savoriness, and that must be because of the pistachio and the thyme. And the bread, it is warm. The bread is spongy, and it tastes uh, pretty light in sweetness. You don't need to chew the bread, it just melts. Well, probably the apple's gonna be the sweetest thing on this dish, right? I think it's green apple. Wow, that's a meal we'll be dreaming about for a while. Time to check in to the Airbnb. We prefer to settle in for the night before it gets dark. Overall, looks clean and welcoming. We'll see how things go. Appearances and functionality don't always go hand in hand. Good morning, it is day two. Of this Airbnb, <laughs> someone wrote on the review that it's a very quiet rental. It is the total opposite. There's like, this is a busy street and the windows are single pane. Anyways, that's part of traveling. You know, you can do all the research, the planning you want, but things not always gonna go your way and you're not always gonna be like fully charged up, fully energetic, right? Sometimes you're gonna get really tired during your trip for whatever reason. And now we're gonna go to the market. We explore Granville Island and the public market. From breakfast until late lunch, we go on an eight-hour food tour. We try lobster rolls, tostadas, candied salmon nuggets, and more. However, there's more to the island than just food. Turns out Granville Island also has beautiful green spaces, views of the water, and an abundant art scene. Be sure to watch our full Granville Island video for all the details. I put the video link in the description box. Just got back to the car. It is five. That is when our parking session ended. Yes, we stayed here from 9 a.m. 9 to 5. 9 to 5. <laughs> totally didn't think like we'd stay until 5. I just put the parking to 5 just in case. We have a 5.30 p.m. reservation. Botanist is inside Fairmont Hotel and serves modern Canadian cuisine focused on seasonal ingredients sourced from the Pacific Northwest. Love the seating by the open kitchen. You can see how the dishes are put together. In place of flowers is an herbarium bottle. 
assembled by hand here in Vancouver. Subtle textures on the cup and saucer. Their logo is embroidered on the fabric napkins. Called the Council of Trees, this cocktail is made of oak moss, cedar, alder, birch sap, blended scotch, pheno, and cherry wood smoked tea. A sprig of amaranth as decor, not for eating, but might have a little smell. It's so smooth. Yeah. Our waitress described this perfectly. It's like a smoky iced tea. Like you're drinking iced tea and in the distance you smell bonfire. This bread comes from a local bakery and this is house made butter. It comes on a wooden board in the shape of a pizza slice. Our individual bread dishes are in the shape of the botanist logo. Ooh, it's very heavy, very dense. It feels very gummy as I pull the bread apart. Sour, a bit moist. It's got grains in it as well. Okay, so this is our 21 day dry aged duck breast oh, uh, with red mole sauce, some salsa tea, poblano pepper tamal, and black bean puree. And over here, having uh, olive oil poached halibut sitting on the charred icon with some crab emulsion. And this is a crab idea. Where to begin? There are many elements. I guess we'll begin with a duck and poblano pepper tamale which has crispy duck skin bits on the top. Mm. This is me doing discreet vlogging. Mm, the crispy duck skin, it's like fireworks of cr crunchiness. We gotta give some attention to the other dish. The foam has shrunk, it's losing its glory. We're told to dip this in the sauce, which is in there. Sweeping away the foam reveals the olive oil poached halibut. It is melt in your mouth. The halibut falls apart so easily, it's kind of hard to stab it. Mmm, the base under the halibut, those ingredients are salty and spicy. And a little bitter sourness too. Mmm. Delicious, really delicious. <laughs> exactly. The beignet has a dungeness crab in it, just like the emulsion. When it first came out, it was hot. Ooh, is that chive in there? I predict this will be good. Like, real good. It's a little bit pillowy, but it's soak it all up. Mommy will finish her bread. Why is everything so good? On the outside has crispy bits. Every dish here has been a win. On the way out, I notice a long papery lighting fixture. Some parts crease along the triangular grid. Other parts have random wrinkles. By the way, there's a bar at the entrance. The way to the loo is also an artful experience. Floor to ceiling mirror. <laughs> Floor to ceiling toilet doors. I usually don't vlog in bathrooms, but this one's kind of nice. Each stall even has a little shelf. Unsk, 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 unsk. On the way out, more glimpses of art and design. Let's wander around the Vancouver Harbor. This building kind of looks like a cruise ship. It's the Canada Place. Contains a convention center, hotel, and ferry terminal. I see a Chevron sign over there. Is that a gas station on the water? Indeed it is. Gas station for boats. And that concludes our Wednesday. Good night. Good morning, happy Thursday. We just checked out of our Airbnb and we are going to get breakfast. It is uh, just a little past 8 a.m. Le Marché Saint-Georges is a corner cafe in a residential neighborhood that serves coffee, crepe, quiche, sandwiches, and soup. Alongside their pastries, they also sell various items, including imported gourmet goods. Occasionally, it's also an event space, and a portion of the building is a private residence. There is indoor seating by the window, or head on over outside. The outdoor setup reminds me of cafes in Paris, where the boundary between cafe and sidewalk melt onto each other. Mamio got a drip coffee, and I got the Americano. It's acidic. Very acidic? Mm -hmm. No, not much. This neighborhood is pretty quiet. 
aside from like the occasional people walking by and talking and the car passing by it's not like the airbnb we're staying at we need to stay at an airbnb here this coffee will wake me up that is the hope smoked salmon quiche with herb de buisson red onion and capers looks gloriously toasty those black specks must be cracked pepper ham gruyere dijon croissant also served on a metal plate. Seems vintage. Oh, the sound. Ooh. Wow, that was satisfyingly crispy. Mmm. Mm. Just looking oh. at you, I could tell it's delicious. Mmm. Let me steal some of that. When I breathe through my nose, it's like some of the flakes just flew off. So cheesy, too. Every time you have a bite of it, mm. it is such a joy to listen to. What a great start to the day. Savory, salty. I wish we had more vocabularies for like describing flavors. Oh la la, just so good. <laughs> mm. If I lived in this neighborhood, I think I'd want to come here every day. <laughs> all right, let's give some attention to the quiche. Let me give you a side profile here. Look at all those lines. It looks like a ruffled dress turned over. The droopy onion looks like a long tongue sticking out. Like an anteater tongue? Oh, it's so juicy. I think some of the juiciness is coming from the egg. Mm. It's savory, but less salty than Mommy O's croissant sandwich. And you definitely feel the salmon in that. No flake goes to waste. <laughs> mm. Mm. We bust our own table. Wait a second, that plate is exquisite. So many little cutouts. Dear Santa, I want this for Christmas. Just noticed this cafe has a little garden along the sidewalk and two wooden lounge chairs. Off we go to the botanical garden. Before we bathe ourselves in nature and flowers, let's jump into a box of boksu. For those new to boksu, it's a monthly subscription service that delivers premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings straight from Japan to your door. They source rare snacks from all over Japan and partner with family businesses to create signature snacks you can't find anywhere else. The first box you get is the Seasons of Japan. Curated by their snack experts, you get a taste of Japan's four seasons. And each box after that features a new theme. And this month's theme is... Manatsu Fruits. Manatsu means midsummer in Japanese. Each boksu is packed with goodies and comes with a culture guidebook, which details out the theme, the snacks, and even teaches you some Japanese words and phrases. Let's try the Musk Melon Boucher. It's a pastry with a sweet filling between two buns with real cantaloupe juice and luscious cream. So fluffy, so soft, so melon. <laughs> I feel like I just transported to unicorn land. More books of snack tasting is at the end of this video. If you'd like to try some rare Japanese snacks and also support our channel, click the link in the description box and use my code MISSMINA to get $15 off your first order. And now, back to Vancouver. The Van Dusen Botanical Garden was built on a former golf course. Comprised of 55 acres, the garden is home to over 7,500 plant species and varieties. It looks like this is the place where the Korean pavilion was. Uh, not sure where it teleported to. Here's a Korean pavilion at Nejangsan National Park. So vibrant. I'm gonna go in the maze. Okay, that's a dead end. Okay, go back. <laughs> if you come with other people and everybody like scatters, it, it, you might need to wait for them at the end. Dead end. <laughs> I don't think we came here before. That's dead end. I'm not sure how long it takes to go through this if you don't like run into any dead ends. It would be cool if there's a place where you could go up and look down at this. We made it! Wow. <laughs> then out of nowhere, we came across this unique terraced building. For a moment, I felt like we were transported to another world. Hi, Duck! 
two geese on a date at Heron Lake. Sculpture kind of looks like a muffin or a chef's hat. It was early June when we visited Vancouver, and there was quite a bit of work being done. Witnessed a lot of planting and grass mowing. This may be the loveliest trash can I've ever laid eyes on. It's got real flowers on it. The Van Dusen Botanical Garden is quite big. Even when we speed walked through it to make sure we stayed on schedule, still took us over two hours. If you want to enjoy it at a relaxed pace and see everything in greater detail, you know, sit and reflect on life, take selfies with flowers, then maybe dedicate at least three hours so you're not rushed. And of course, depending on the season, your experience may vary. We arrived to the garden like 15 minutes before opening and there was a lot of parking. Now it looks pretty packed. It's almost 12 p.m. now and by the time we left, there's a bunch of kids there. They're on field trips. And now, back to downtown Vancouver for our final meal before heading home. Lunch is on Robson Street. It's said to be one of Vancouver's oldest commercial streets and one of the longest as it stretches from Stanley Park to the stadium. Who's ready for some Korean food? Welcome to Sura. You can get a taste of Korean royal cuisine. We're here for the lunch special, which is 25 Canadian dollars per person. Minimum of two orders, so bring someone to enjoy it with. When we first arrived, it was busy. First up is the beef rice porridge. Tangpyeongche, the mung bean jelly is topped with dried seaweed strips. This one is ojinga chomuchim, translated as spicy squid salad. Back to the porridge. We are super soft. So some chuk, you could see the rice grains, but this one, it's like blended. The rice pieces are very small. It's gentle and savory. Here we have the busang with pickled radish, two slices, with the onion, raw onion seasoned. Chapche, the glass noodles came with a big piece of woodier mushroom and bulgogi. Usually I've seen chapche ingredients as thinner slices. The chapche also has onion, cabbage, sesame seeds, and scallion. The beef is tender. Hello, kimchi jjeon. It's a savory pancake. The quintessential Korean side dish, kimchi. kimchi. We are given individual bowls of white rice, a scoop of potato salad, boiling bowl of tenjang jjigae, soybean paste stew. That's not all. Cheyuk pokkum, spicy pork, sengseon tigim, fried fish, tangsuyuk, deep fried sweet and sour pork. All the dishes have arrived. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. This table is stuffed, and so will we be. It looks like a slice of pizza, but very flimsy. Okay, we've had kimchi jjeon many, many times in our life. I think I rarely have a bad kimchi jjeon. And the edges, oh, some of those edges are so crisp. We are eating a lot of beautifully crispy things on this trip. Uh, you can wrap it with a slice of radish. Ah. Normally, Mamio does not eat posam, so this is all on me. Not complaining at all. This stuff is yums, yo. The pork is smooth, then it has this kind of sleepy, savory flavor. It's delicious as is, but when you pair it with the onion and the radish, it makes the flavor more complex and more delicious. The jelly can be quite slippery. Oops, I dropped one. We have bean sprouts and carrot on that. And it looks like a zucchini and sprinkles of sesame seeds. 
So the jelly itself doesn't have flavor. What gives it that flavor is whatever you put on it. So in this case, uh, you get a hint of sesame oil. This is fish cake, but it's dehydrated and cooked with. So it's a little chewy, a little bit of like a jerky texture. Let's try some tang soo. Here they cut the ingredients big as well. We have one big piece of mushroom, uh, two slices of carrot, a bigger chunk of onion, it's a cucumber. Also one big slice. The glaze is on the bottom, so make sure you dip it in that. The glaze is sweet, so that makes it feel more candied. Let's try the napa cabbage kimchi. There's a lot to say about kimchi. First off, uh, there are many kinds of kimchi. This is a classic one, the napa cabbage. There's fresh kimchi and then there's fermented kimchi. This one looks fresh. I can be a little picky about my kimchi. I actually prefer fermented kimchi and definitely fresh. Sweet, salty, and it is spicy. This is a cheyuk pork, spicy pork. Is it spicier than the kimchi? Really? Ooh, that's so soft. It's definitely um, more sweet than spicy. You want to eat rice or something to balance that flavor out because it's pretty flavorful. On to the battered and fried fish. Comes with mushroom, carrot, pepper, and sauce. Inside is solid fish. It looks like a fish and chips without the chips. That one's like a cousin to tang suyu because they both have sauce. This one's ojinga, squid. And some eggs in here. Eggs, really? Yeah. Oh, roll. And cucumber. Ooh, look at this. It's a dangerous one. I don't know how we're going to finish all this food. <laughs> full already. Spicy and sour. And so those long pieces, some of it is squid. Some of it is onion. And there's also a radish. But they all look similar because they have similar coloring and shape. Because a lot of the dishes we had is flavorful, this one I don't really feel the potato salad as much. The potato salad acts as like a rice because it's bland in comparison to like some of these other dishes. Let us migrate the tenjang jjigae into our individual bowls. It has zucchini, tubu, onion, and more. So buttery, I don't know why. Buttery? Yeah. Interesting. I never had a buttery tenjang jjigae. It tastes very different than the tenjang jjigae I've had in my life. Because tenjang jjigae can be like very strong and salty. It's still delicious, but it's more a gentle tenjang jjigae. I wonder if this is more likable to people than like a deep, deep tenjang jjigae. Tenjang jjigae We are Korean and we approve this Korean restaurant. Two blocks away is a Korean supermarket called Hannam. It's on the second floor, so let's use the Stairmaster. Aha! A Korean barbecue restaurant called Tebak Gonga. Snacks and ramyeon, many of which are sold at Korean markets near our home. We have a BTS seasoned flavor, which is seaweed. And now, we're gonna do dessert and then head home. This ice cream shop just opened and there's already a mini line. While waiting, I glance around the environment. What is it about brick buildings that are so appealing? We made it into the dessert shop. Witness the making of a creme brulee ice cream sandwich. That's our sweetie, the s'mores bar. Burn, baby, burn. This is the half bar and it's gonna be plenty for us. How beautiful is that? Looks kind of sculptural, like plaster applied in broad strokes. Let's dig in. Mm, wow. That is ice cream in the inside. This angle kind of makes it look like a corn dog. <laughs> I thought the outside is marshmallow, but it's melting. The interior is definitely chocolate ice cream. It's so fluffy. It's like whipped cream. Yeah, this layer right here, the light brown, must be the graham cracker. That's where you get the crunchiness. It's making me very thirsty. <laughs> I feel like I need a whole like bottle of water for this. Mm. Okay, before we head home, we're gonna pick up some water. 
Aburi to go by Minami is a small grocery shop that sells sushi to go and drinks. Our time in Vancouver has come to an end. It was a really great foodie trip. There are so many places to eat. What I showed you is just a teeny glimpse. There are so many places I wanted to put in this itinerary. There are a lot of restaurants closed on Monday and Tuesday and even Wednesday, some even on Thursday. Some restaurants only open in the evening, so our choices were limited. I wanted to show you a variety of places, but also I consider like what my freshest previous videos are. So I wanted to show you some dim sum place here. However, our last video was featuring a dim sum place, a couple, like two dim, dim sum places. So try to like make it diverse, you know? Hope you guys enjoyed eating and exploring with us and that I gave you some ideas on what to do for your trip to Vancouver. Anything you want to say? Hasta la vista, Vancouver. I will be back. Remember to check out our foodie walking tour of Granville Island and its public market. I put the video link in the description box. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. The presentation of the first dish inspired me. I painted a deconstructed version of it. For the most part, painted on solid colors. Other times, I watered down the paint for a more translucent effect. For those who love arts and crafts, you might enjoy my newest video on the Creative Chill Out channel. I give you a sketchbook tour with detailed commentary. Eventually, we approach downtown Vancouver while driving on the Granville Bridge. Below this bridge is Granville Island. It's a small shop with three benches and two small tables. Mm, seats maybe six people? Depends on the booty and how ambitious you feel about maximizing space. The pizza shop next door? Mm, it also looks pretty tempting. Oh my goodness, this camera is focusing on the portraits, not your face. <laughs> May this sculpture inspire laughter, playfulness, and joy in all who experience it. Mommy was looking at the sauce and she was thinking of it like clouds. Like, you know, when you look at clouds, you see things. So you said this looked like a woman laying down? Yeah. Oh yeah, I kind of see that. Yeah. And then something looked like a fish. Oh yeah, that looks like a goldfish cracker. Wow! What's wow? What about it? Wow! Go back in this spongy breadish. Spongy breadish. I love this texture on the wall. Is that a smiley face? It looks kind of like pokey. And then the interior is mostly like a muted pink. The waitresses have uniforms. They all wear dark uh, green dresses and with something gold. It's one of my favorite color combos. Uh, have you seen my home office? Dark green and gold. We have diners starting to flow in next to us, so I might uh, keep the vlogging uh, really discreet or just do voiceover. fall asleep. If you ever park in this building, you have to pay after you park, not pay when you go out. That's the machine to pay. This parking lot smells very much of fried food. Oh, I think that's where we drove earlier today. And actually the bottom, when you uh, cut into it, it sounds a little bit like the croissant, you know, the flaky sound. So this is not just a taste and visual treat, it's an auditory treat. So this garden, uh, there is a restaurant right by it. Visitor Center, Van Dusen Botanical Garden. We have a map and they also displayed some living plants 
and they tell you what species they are. That's the ornamental onion. Here we have the chive, the common chive. Oh, more here. Ooh, their shadows are looking cool too. Oh, look at this. It's called the pass flower. Oh, yeah, it's definitely. It looks like um, like whiskers, cat whiskers. <laughs> Sitting at bench. At the time, these large chairs looked so fun and inviting. In retrospect, I questioned, are these more sculpture or more chair? An instance where the line between art and reality blurs. In a few hours, we're heading back home to Greater Seattle. Mamio is interested in getting some maple syrup, so we check out a market nearby. Many items here can be found in Washington, so we're looking for Canadian treats. Bagels and chocolate. You're gonna eat it now? We just had breakfast. Mmm, nice bagel. Is it chewy? I brush my teeth. So this place opened today at 11.30 and when we arrived it was about 12.15 and it was, it looked pretty packed but now the customers are going out because like the peak lunch hour is kind of dwindling down. <laughs> In the previous video, remember that chicken pot pie we had at Granville Island? You know that shell Mommy O protected? Well, we brought it home with us, and it's been our housemate for 45 days so far. At the time I record this voiceover, maybe I'll take it a step further and preserve it in resin. Luscious! Which treat to try next? Oh, there's a waffle cookie. Yeah, the waffle sand? Look at the pattern! I love the cover. It's checkered with um, like this neutral light, you know, like a beige with gold. Wow, I want to play uh, checkers on that. <laughs> uh, you got some cream in the middle. Natsu Mikan Waffle Cookie. Mikan are tangerine-like citrus that's native to Japan. It is picturesquely citrusy. The image it paints in my head, I feel like I'm walking through a field of yellow flowers. Cream inside is sweet, but the waffle outside is not as sweet. It's so crunchy. This one, feel it. Jiggly feel. How <laughs> cold. <laughs> Are you using it as like a facial? <laughs> yeah, cold. Flies. <laughs> this one is the white peach jelly. A one bite jelly with slices of real white peaches inside. White peaches are often sweeter and more fragrant than standard yellow peaches. This is so amazing. They are all from one box. How come this one is cold like this? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, oh yeah, this one, huh? it probably is like more room temperature. It adjusts, right? Wow. Because it's wet, because it's a jelly. It is colder than room temperature. Oh, I love these colors. Uh, are we going to have one each or share it? Oh, one each. <laughs> So we tried to divide out our snacking instead of eating it all at once. Uh, you know, like it'll be too much goodness in one day. So today we're gonna try four. Oh, you cut it. Oh! Oh, Ooh. peachy. I see the peach in there. Uh, oh yeah. It looks like a glacier. Like I wanna <laughs> climb on it and slide. Mmm. It's hard to say which is my favorite of everything we tried so far. Everything is so good in their own way. 
I thought the boucher when we tried it, I was thinking that's but this is that's probably gonna be the best of the whole box. But this peach one, I love this peach one too. Yeah. You know, uh, some snacks you try, it could taste like a fake peach or like a fake fruit, but this one tastes fresh. Like having a real peach you just picked off the tree that's mm. ripe and ready to go. What should we try next? Mori no Madeleine Lemon. A madeleine is a Frenchy, oh no, fluffy French sponge cake. This treat is flavored with lemon for a delicious touch of citrus. Did you cleanse your palette? It's like a 30 pointed star. Why don't you take a bite? And then I'll take the second bite. Very moist. It's softer than madeleine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one tastes familiar. I can't pinpoint what it is I had that reminds me of something I had in childhood. Oh, it's kind of like Twinkies. Like the bread part of Twinkies. I haven't had Twinkies for a really long time, but from my memory, the bread part of Twinkies is sort of like this, but this is a little bit more firm and dense. I'm just recollecting mm -hmm. memories. Mm -hmm. It's so similar to pineapple pie, mm. right? But it's lemon, not pineapple. Let's try one more <laughs> thing. Okay. <laughs> I think this one's more savory. This poke karin. Um, where is it? Oh, here. Ooh, deep fried. Poke karin, lemon. This crispy snack is also is called karinto, a crunchy puffed and deep fried treat that is flavored with setushi lemon for a touch of tang. All right, oh, did you cleanse your palate? Oh, yeah. It smells deep fried for right. sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mmm, <laughs> interesting. Mmm, so tangy. Texture-wise, this is the most firm thing we had today. The boucher, the first snack we had, that is the fluffiest and softest. Texturally, that's the best one, in my opinion. What's your favorite that we had? I like this because I never tried this kind of snack before, so I'm um, unique. The melon musk boucher and the peach jelly, mm, those are my favorites so far. Thanks again to Boksu for sponsoring this video. Remember to click the link in the description box and use my code MISSMINA to get $15 off your first order. And now our tradition, dance, dance party! party.